In this video, I'm gonna talk about coroutine cancellations and also exceptions that are thrown in coroutines. So how are these things handled? Like for example, if a, if a child job throws an exception, how does that, how does that uh, affect the parent? How does that affect the other children? Also a cancellation, is cancellation the same as an exception thrown? These are the kind of things that I wanna talk about and how this ties into the idea of structured concurrency. So first, let's read the definition of structured concurrency for those of you who, who've never heard this term before. I'm just going to pick out a couple sentences in here that I think most accurately describe what I'm trying to convey in this video. So it says here that the core concept is encapsulation of concurrent threads of execution. So that means concurrent threads working at the same time to accomplish some task. Now, if you come down a little bit, it says such encap encapsulation allows errors in the concurrent threads to be pro propagated to the control structure's parent scope and managed by the native error handling mechanisms. So that sounds like a mouthful, but basically what that says is the encapsulation of all of the work being done on the different threads uh, how, how does, how does errors get handled in those scenarios? Like one thread, one job throws an error. How does that affect the other jobs that are concurrently running at the same time? So I'm going to paint out kind of four scenarios. So there's going to be four examples and here's, here's a presentation outlining kind of what that's going to be all about. So suppose you have one parent job and this parent job launches three children jobs, job A, job B and job C. So in the first scenario, job A, let's suppose that job A completes successfully. Just it takes some amount of time, we'll say 500 milliseconds, sure. But job B throws an exception. And then job C will also complete. So the question here is how does that affect the parent? If some jobs complete uh, successfully, but some throw exceptions, well, how, how does that affect the other jobs and how does that affect the parent? That's the first question. The next kind of scenario is supposing job A also completes again job B fails and job C fails. So again, the question, how does this affect the parent? This is multiple exceptions thrown in multiple different children jobs. Now, the next scenario is a little bit different. So suppose that job A completes again, job A is a good job, it always completes. Then you have job B being canceled. But look at the way that this would that this would happen. So normally coroutines don't just get canceled. You, it, it's not just going to cancel on its own. So a scenario when a coroutine might get canceled is if you did some error handling yourself, so you have job B equals launch, you're creating a new job, then you have a try catch inside that is catching any exceptions that might be thrown on that job. And then if an exception is thrown, you say, okay, well, since an exception is thrown, let's just cancel the job because we can't move forward. So that would be a scenario when a job could potentially be canceled. So then job C, let's say that that finishes successfully. The question again, how does that affect the parent job? And the last scenario that we're going to look at is supposing job A completes again, job A just never fails. Don't worry about job A. Uh, job B is canceled and job C is canceled. So this, this is a scenario where like the last one, you have a cancellation, you have some error handling, you decided to cancel the job if an exception was thrown. So again, the question, how does this affect the parent job? Okay, so here we are in Android Studio. Now let's set up the scenario that I'm gonna use to paint this picture for you. So I have a pretty simple application. I have one function named main. I have a parent job that's being launched on the IO dispatcher. So this is kind of the parent job that I was referring to in the presentation. I have a single function here called get result. It takes a number as input, and then it just will return that number multiplied by two. You actually don't need this with context. I can get rid of that. So it just delays uh, some number times 500 milliseconds. So if it's one, it's gonna delay 500 milliseconds. If it's two, it's gonna delay a thousand milliseconds and so on and then it just returns the number times two uh, i need to write return here so pretty simple nothing nothing crazy there so now i'm going to write out a couple jobs here and we're going to see how these different scenarios affect the parent job so first here i have this kind of job a section labeled here i have value job a equals launch so i'm creating a new coroutine a new isolated environment for this job to run in of course it's going to inherit its its uh its scope it's going to get tied to the parent scope so if something happens to this job the parent job will know about it so you have value result a equals get result just calling that function that we have defined if that is able to be retrieved you're printing that to the log and then we have an invoke on completion added to the job so that we know if that job uh, threw an exception or not so if the job threw an exception this throwable will not be null 
you can see that I'm checking here for it. And if it's not null, then it goes error getting result A and then prints out the throwable. So that's job A. Now I'm gonna create two more jobs exactly like that, just label them job B and job C. So I'm gonna skip the video ahead here and paste those in. Okay, so just like I said, I have two more jobs. Job B, which does exactly the same thing as job A, it's just getting a different result. Notice the number being passed into here is different. So this, this number is one, this number is two, and this number is three. That's literally the only difference between these three jobs job A, B, and C, other than of course their variables are labeled differently. Like this is result A, this is result B, and then this is result C. So these are three jobs that are operating under a single parent job and they're gonna be executed simultaneously. So as soon as this parent job launches, it's gonna launch this one, this one, and this one all at the same time. Now, just like I have an invoke on completion on each one of these individual children jobs, I'm gonna add an invoke on completion onto the parent itself. So you can see up here, I have parent job defined as this launch. So I'm gonna come down below that and attach an invoke on completion. So there we have parent job dot invoke on completion. And again, the same kind of rules apply here. If this throwable does not equal null, we know that the job, the parent job failed it through an exception. Otherwise, we can say that the parent job was successful. Now, referring back to the diagram that I had at the beginning of this video, the first scenario that we wanna look at is job A completes, job B throws an exception, but job C also completes. So how does this affect the parent job? So first we need a way to trigger this. Well, we're gonna come down into the get result function here, and I'm gonna write if the number equals two. So if you come up here, notice that job B, it's passing number two. So that's a way I can kind of pick out job B and force it to fail. So I can say if the number equals two, then I want to throw an exception. So I want to say exception, just getting the Kotlin generic import for exception. And in here, I'll write some message like error getting result for number and I'll print out the number. In this case, it's gonna be two that actually causes that error. Now I'm gonna run this and we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna press Shift F10. Optionally, you can press the play button up top, whichever one you prefer. So the first thing that I want you to notice here is the app actually crashes. So an exception is thrown and this actually causes the entire app to crash. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to show you how to catch these exceptions in the parent job before we move forward. So right now we have kind of no error handling. It's kind of like there's no try catches, there's no, there's nothing to handle the errors. So what we can do is we can attach uh, an, what's called an exception handler, coroutine exception handler to the parent job. So if any of the children jobs throw exceptions, this will catch that exception and allow it to continue doing what it was doing in some scenarios. Don't now, there's, I gotta be really careful with what I say here. Make sure to finish watching this video. Um, there's a, yeah, there's a lot of kind of tricky things here. So anyway, let's write out this exception handler. So I just have a variable, a value named handler. It's a coroutine exception handler. It returns an exception. Also the coroutine context. So you can see if I hold down control, the first parameter is the coroutine context. And then I'm just gonna print, print out a statement saying exception thrown in one of the children and then printing out that exception. So now I can pass this handler to the launch of the parent job and now the app should not crash if an exception is thrown. So let's press Shift F10 to run this again and see what happens. Okay, so the app does not crash, that's good. Now let's take a look at the results and kind of analyze what's happening. So first you get result A printing out two, that's this line running right here. Next you get a whole bunch of errors. So it says error getting result B, that's gonna be uh, right here, error getting result B. So you can see the invoke on completion uh, does detect that there is a throwable and it's not null. It says, you know, um, error getting result number two, which is the exception that's passed from our get result function. And then now this is where it gets interesting. So notice here it says error getting result C. So also result C through an error. So uh, result B threw an error, which caused result C to throw an error. And then it says, there's our handler, exception thrown in one of the children. So if you scroll up to the top here, remember that handle that we created, exception thrown in one of the children, prints out that exception. And then also it says parent job failed. So if we scroll down here to our invoke on completion on the parent job itself, the whole parent job failed. So basically, uh, if an exception is thrown, it caused Number one, the job itself to be canceled. So that's our job, our job B, that, that whole job got canceled. And any job after it, so any job that was currently in, in progress also got canceled. So essentially everything gets, gets canceled that was in progress. So referring back to our initial diagram, supposing job B throws an exception, what happens to the parent job in this scenario? 
well, if job B throws an exception, the parent job fails, which will which will cause any jobs that are currently in progress to also fail. So here I, on the diagram, I have that job C actually completes. Well, in this scenario, job C actually would not complete. This should be an X because this takes 1500 milliseconds. Any jobs that are, that are uh, taking longer than the one that threw the exception will also fail. So basically everything fails in this scenario. So now let's take a look at cancellation. So suppose that you have some kind of error handling. Instead of, instead of throwing an exception, you catch the exception, but then decide to cancel the job. So what is this gonna do to the parent job? Let's take a look at Android Studio and experiment. So I'm gonna come down to our get result function here. And now instead of throwing an exception, I'm going to cancel the job. So I'm actually gonna cut this message out. So I'm pressing Control X and I'm just gonna write cancel and I'm gonna add a cancellation exception. So can cancellation exception then pass a message in here and then get that import so i'm i'm just calling cancel on whatever's happening and passing an exception to that cancel now i'm going to press shift f10 to run this again and let's see what happens so the app runs no crash that's good now let's take a look at the log output so we see that result A is two, result B is four, and result C is six, and everything actually works fine. There's no, there, nothing happens basically. We have all of the results retrieved, they're retrieved correctly, and even the parent job says that everything is good to go. So essentially this did nothing. Like calling cancel within the job itself did nothing. It didn't cancel the parent, everything still worked exactly as it should. So I, just, I wanted to just show you this to make sure that you understand that calling cancel inside of a, a launch or inside of a coroutine doesn't do anything. If you want to cancel it, you have to actually call it on the job itself. So if I was up here, uh, just to give you an example explicitly, if I wanted to cancel it, I would have to do, you know, I could do like delay, uh, you know, 200 milliseconds and then I could say job B dot cancel. That, that would actually cancel the job. So I'm going to press shift F10 to run that again and let's take a look. So the log output is much more interesting in this case. So we get result A that's working totally fine. We get result C, but we, we get an error saying error getting result B and there was a cancellation. But notice that the parent job actually does, it is successful. So there's no, there's no exception thrown. The parent job is not being canceled. The parent job is fine. Just that one individual job, job B, was canceled. So referring back to our diagram, what happens in this scenario if job B is canceled? Well, the parent job is successful. Both job A and job C continue business as usual and the parent job is successful. Now, the last thing I'm gonna show you is, first I'm gonna delete this delay and delete this cancellation. The last thing I'm gonna show you is, what if a cancellation exception is thrown? So this is a special exception that is part of the coroutines uh, framework. So if I, if I just throw a cancellation, whoops, if I could type properly, cancellation exception, and I'll just add the same error message we've been doing. So just copying that in there and putting that in. Um, so this is an exception, but it's a special exception. Now let's see what happens. I'm gonna press shift F10 to run this again, and let's uh, take a look at the output. So notice here, we still get our result two, then we get error getting result B. So result B is unsuccessful. And then we get result C, which is fine, and we get a success. So this is basically treated exactly the same as we did up here when I canceled the job. So remember up here, I wrote this delay, I, I delayed 200 milliseconds, and then I, I went job B dot cancel. Basically, the, by throwing this cancellation exception, it, it treated it in exactly the same way. And that's what I wanted to point out. I wanted to point out that a calling cancel on a job is equivalent to throwing a cancellation exception within that job. So it's kind of like a it's kind of like a special exception just for coroutines that will not propagate to the parent. That's kind of the key concept. The 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 concept of propagating the error to the parent because we saw earlier that if there is uh, an exception thrown in one of the children, not a cancellation exception, a regular exception, that error gets propagated all the way to the parent. It shuts down everything pretty much. The parent fails, everything fails. But if there's a special exception called a cancellation exception, that is that will only affect that one isolated job within the, the whole parent scope. So now what are my recommendations regarding these cancellations, error propagating to the parent? What, what, do I, what do I recommend given all this new information that you got? Well, I think it, de it obviously depends on the scenario. And I think there's kind of two main scenarios that you need to watch out for. So the first scenario is uh, suppose that you have uh, a parent job that's being launched and 
within that parent job is a bunch of children. You can say, you know, job A, B, and C, just like we've been doing. And then suppose that you want to do something if that job is complete. And then if it, if, if it, if it completes successfully. But if it doesn't complete successfully, then you don't want to do something and maybe you want to show an error to the user. That's scenario one. Basically, you, you need all of the jobs, all the children to complete successfully. Uh, scenario two is maybe you don't care if all the children uh, complete successfully. Maybe, maybe you have a whole bunch of jobs that are running within a parent. If some complete, fine. If some don't, who really cares? It's not worth throw, throwing an error. It's not worth telling the user about. Um, those are the two scenarios that I see anyway, the two kind of main, main scenarios. So in the first scenario, suppose you have job A, B, and C, just like we've been looking at, they all complete at different times. Um, now the first scenario, again, to remind you is you need all of them to complete. If that's the case, I would just recommend, you know, putting an invoke on completion onto the parent job, checking for the exception. If there's no exception, then you know that the parent job completed, all of the children completed, everything is great and then you can see down in the bottom here I have a comment saying execute your final job so you you wait for completion if everything's good then you execute your final job that's that's kind of how I would recommend approaching that and there's lots of different ways you can go about that like I said the things that we've talked about in this video will teach you how to uh, structure your jobs so that if an exception is thrown the parent will completely shut down if it's not thrown, then you know that everything ran good. The second scenario is a little trickier because you 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 could of course just throw a whole bunch of try catches into each one of your children jobs, but that's not necessarily the cleanest way to do it. Um, so there's this thing called supervisor job, which I'm gonna do a video on next. And basically what you can do with supervisor job is you can create like a, it, it gives special properties to your parent job such that if there is an exception thrown, it's not going to cause the parent to shut down. So it's like, it's like creating a special job that in the event of an exception, of a cancellation, whatever, the parent is still gonna run, the other children are still gonna run. So again, just to remind you of this scenario that I painted out, it's if you have a whole bunch of children jobs in a parent, you don't care if some of them fail, some of them succeed, you just want them all to run, uh, then you would want to use this thing called supervisor job, which I'll talk about more in, in the next video. But just you know, as a look into the future, as a glance into the future, it's essentially just it gives special properties to your parent job, such that if there's an exception, if something goes wrong, everything doesn't collapse in on itself and everything fails. If the video helps you, please leave a like, leave a comment. It helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. YouTube seems to hate me. It seems to be promoting guys like like this coding and flow guy a lot more than a lot more than me. I kind of stumbled across his channel and I realized that he has 111,000 subscribers and I only have 70,000. So if, if you could, if you like my videos, please, please leave a like so that I can hopefully compete with people like this because they're, they're just, they seem to be just taking over YouTube these days, a new uh, Android programmer every day. Also, if you want to learn how to build real projects, applying all the concepts that I talk about in my videos, check out codingwithmitch.com and go over to the courses section. I have courses on all kinds of new topics mostly from Android Jetpack and architecture. I got stuff on testing, MVI architecture, coroutines, dagger, repository pattern, retrofit, room persistence library. I even got some stuff on Django. I'll teach you how to build a website that is exactly like this one. Some of them are paid, some of them are free. Either way, it's very good value. I doubt you'll find a website on the internet that gives you more value than codingwithmitch.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.